Hello everyone, I'm Mark Cook here once again from Shiny Shoe, the developers of Monster Train, to talk to you about Monster Train as we get very close to the official launch of the game, which is coming up on May 21st, so just six days away, I think. Did I get the math right on that? I did. <laughs> I'm super excited about that. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to play the game publicly uh, in the multiplayer modes and compete online with everybody who's out there, um, and to really share all the improvements that we've put into the game since we first, uh, I guess, did our public beta, which was a month, a few months ago. In fact, that like video that I just showed, the trailer is a little out of date. Um, there is no public beta right now. However, there is a demo, so if you're interested in playing Monster Train right now, you can download a free demo on Steam. Um, and if you like what you see, please consider wishlisting us. Uh, that demo is quite old now at this point, though, and there's a ton of like awesome improvements that have gone into the game since we made that demo. Uh, and so you'll be able to see some of them today. And without further ado, we're going to start looking at what our plan is today. And I see there's some questions coming, too, so we may need to answer those. Um, but overall, the plan on the stream is um, I'm going to look at single player briefly. I had some uh, questions asked about how the morsel eating works in the Umbra, exactly what the rules are around that. So um, my plan is to play a sub uh, or an allied clan of Umbra. Sometimes we call it sub clan, but allied clan of Umbra, just briefly in single player to explain some things. And then maybe we'll see if we want to play that run out, maybe play multiplayer, uh, we'll see. I'll jump over the questions we have so far. All right, AmphiDSF asks, how did you come up with the general morsel design? Um, well, I had no involvement in it whatsoever. So <laughs> if we put that kind of out there first. Um, it was interesting, like the Umbra clan was probably the clan in Monster Train that had the most changes made early on in terms of how it was initially proposed, uh, in terms of the lore of what it's all about and uh, to the kind of ultimate outcome that we got. So, you know, the Umbra are like, they're like miners, basically. They come from a part of hell where they're like, Mining some kind of hell energy is the best way I can I can describe it. There are people on the dev team that'll have better answers to this, um, but uh, essentially they also had like a lot of robots. There's like there's one robot still in the game. I don't know. So we wanted to have these like little guys. They had this food concept. I think initially the morsels were not characters, and uh, you know I, some people have pointed out that it looks like there was some inspiration taken from Spirited Away. And that may have been the case. I honestly don't know because I wasn't involved in that, but um, I'm really glad that we made them characters because we've got these cute little guys holding these crystals and other things that can be eaten. Um, so I think they're cool. Uh, maybe if one of the other people on the dev team is in chat that knows the, the real answer and can answer that better, please speak up. All right, Overlord15 says, inspiration for each clan. Well, I just tried my, my best on that one. Um, <laughs> I am not the right person to answer that question, so I'm not gonna try, uh, but it was trying to think about cool thematic monsters, basically, that would be interesting to fit in within this world of hell that we've created, that would all feel different from each other, um, and that we could like tie backstories to that uh, felt interesting. So like trying to do something different with them, really. Um, Giovanni Cujo asks, will this game be pro-modding? Uh, I mean, I'm really interested in supporting mods in an official way. Right now, we don't have official mod support planned for launch. Um, I'm not you know, quite sure what exactly that would mean for our game, so I think I would like to talk to people in the modding community who have opinions on how it might work or what might make sense workflow-wise for them and so on. Um, but, you know, I'm all for it. Uh, I think modding can really extend the life of a game and keep the community interested. And, you know, there's all kinds of funny stuff. Like, from my perspective, I would love to see, like, weird memes that people put in via mods uh, into the game. So um, I think it's a great idea. I want to talk more about it with players on Discord. Speaking of Discord, you should join our Discord community at discord.gg forward slash monster train if you're not already a participant. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. I mean... Of course, the community around the game. There's also a bot that knows everything about the game where you can look up information like cards, artifacts, who's at the top of the daily leaderboard for the daily challenge, and so on and so forth. So, um, so all kinds of cool stuff in there. Uh, I guess I'll mention that we did take the bot away. Like during the public beta, the bot was in the public channels in Discord, and we took it away. 
while we were trying to finish the game. It's going to come back. I don't think it's back yet. It might be back today or very soon, but by early next week at the latest, uh, it'll be back. All right. Let's see. After the stream was requested. All right. Um, cool. Sorry, I was reading something that I'm seeing notes from uh, my little magic helper elf. But let's, let's get started. Let's jump over to the game. All right. So let's start a new run. And like I said, we're going to look at a Umbra allied clan run to explain some things about how the morsel units work. Ah, well, it looks like this is bad. <laughs> I am, uh, I just reset my save data, it looks like, and I'm on a build that doesn't have cheats. So, okay, here, let's look at me while I go and fix this. And you guys can just enjoy my crappy lighting that I have in this room. Do, 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 do. Mm. All right, we're going to switch builds here. I'm clicking in Windows. It's very exciting. All right, booting the game back up. Okay. Cheats deployed. There we are. Cool. Start a new run. And now the game is going to tell me that I unlocked everything. All right, so we unlocked the Stygian Guard. We unlocked the Umbra. We unlocked the Belting Remnant. But for today, our primary clan, I'm going to go random. And for our allied clan, as we talked about, we're going to go Umbra. Um, and we'll start at Covenant 1 just to see if we get any cards that are related to Morsels to help explain how those work. Uh, and let's go. Cool. Uh, we did not get anything related to Morsels. And we may not play out this run completely, so I'm gonna kind of not go into detail on this information and really just focus on the particular question that we had. Um, let's see. In fact, what do we got? I'm just gonna go crazy. I'm not even gonna choose anything. So this is what I often do if I'm testing something in the game. <clears throat> All right, we've got our battle, but you know, we're focused on just explaining how Morsels work. So let's see what they look like. All right, we didn't get any in our first hand, so I'm just gonna play some units, place them on some different floors. Okay. All right, so we got Shade Splitter. Shade Splitter is a card that allows us to add a common or uncommon morsel unit to your hand. And these morsels are like, they're a key part of the Umbra faction. Uh, they are snacks, as we used to call them, snack units. Uh, but you, like other units in the train can eat them. So morsels can't eat each other, but the Melting Remnant Champion, Rector Flicker, Flicker, excuse me, can eat them. A train steward can eat them. Any other unit in the game on the player side can eat a morsel. And every morsel imbues the unit that eats it with some kind of benefit. Uh, so in this case, for the Antumbra morsel, the eater gains plus four life permanently for, or permanently for the course of the battle, I guess I should say. It's a battle length enhancement. That's why that enhanced tooltip is right there saying modify a card or unit for the duration of battle. Um, Yuri Frum Friend asks, I'm sure this was answered before, but how long has this game been in the works? Um, we have been working on Monster Train for 19 months, 20 months or so. Um, it changed a lot from the early prototypes to what we have today, but uh, yeah, that's that's about how long we've been working on it. All right, so okay, so the questions that people really seem to want to have an answer to is like, who eats the morsel when it's in a room? So let's talk about that. If I put this morsel into this room, under the rules I just explained, there's only one unit that could possibly eat it. Uh, it, well, it has to be within the same room, so this train steward's definitely not going to eat it. The enemies can't eat it. Uh, so, Rector Flicker will eat the morsel if there is only one unit in the room with it at the end of turn. Um, and the eaten tooltip here says what happens. This unit is eaten by the front non-morsel unit after the next round of combat. And it's important to note that it is after combat, so if the morsel dies in combat, it will not be eaten. Uh, so sometimes it can make sense to put morsels in front of your units because enemies attack first and enemies 
almost always deal their damage to whomever is in the front in the room, unless there's there's some exceptions in the game, but that's not important for uh, what we're talking about now. So sometimes it can make sense to put like a morsel as a blocker, either as a, like a quote unquote chump blocker, just to have them die to uh, allow units behind them to survive. Or sometimes like uh, in this case, it actually would have been smarter if I had put the morsel in front because this unit only, the forged disciple enemy only does two damage. Uh, and the Entumber mor Morsel has five life, so that way my champion would not have taken damage at all. But I put him in the back because I wanted to show off something in particular with how it works. What if we had another unit in this room? So let's put the train steward right there. Now who's going to eat? Well, uh, our kind of previews updated a bit. Um, these are these like numbers and purple triggers and things that are happening to show off what the resolution at the end of the turn is going to be. And now we see that there's plus two on the train steward. So if we go back and look at the morsel, we see that the eaten trigger says they will be eaten by the front non-morsel unit, the front one. So it means front within the room. So it does not mean adjacent. It's not the front one as in the rector flicker in this case. Now that the train steward is here, the train steward is the one that's going to eat the morsel. So it's really important uh, for morsel-based strategies to think about how you place the non-morsel units within the room, uh, because there are a bunch of units in the game that benefit from eating. Uh, there's a trigger called Gorge. So if we go to the logbook, we can go look up, look them up, and let's find one of them. Of course, I have to cheat to <laughs> to get everything to be seen. Hold on one second. Do do do. I don't know if it's really important for me to hide the cheat screens, but uh, just out of safety, I'm doing it. Now, all the cheats are deleted out of the game build for uh, the release version of the game, so um, I'm playing a special developer-only version of the game right now. Okay, um, <clears throat> so if we go back here, we can go and look at a unit, like the Crucible Collector, for example. So the Crucible Collector has a gorge trigger. It says, triggers when this unit eats a morsel unit. That's what gorge is. And uh, the Crucible Collector will gain Lifesteal 1, which Lifesteal means when it deals damage, it heals that much back. So it's a great effect. It's great to get the Crucible Collector to gorge on Morsels, which powers them up. Um, so just imagine, though, if that uh, Crucible Collector was right here where Rector Flicker is standing and there was a Train Steward in front, you can't eat any Morsels until the Train Steward dies or you find some other way to move... Uh, the unit to the front. So, like, layout of your units within the room really matters. Um, this is why, I mean, it matters in all clans, but it matters even more in uh, the Umbra because of the morsel mechanics. So, all right. At the end of all this, um, I'll end my turn in just a sec. I was going to say, also, uh, another reason why kind of capacity rules are really, they're always important, but really interesting when it comes to uh, the Umber Clan specifically is like you sometimes you want to eat as many morsels as you can. I mean, oftentimes you do. They're all beneficial. There's no downsides to eating morsels. So you want to put as many morsels into a room as you can, or in multiple rooms. But like right now, our capacity is full in this room. So we have five out of five capacity taken. We've got two on the train steward, two on uh, our champion, and one from the morsel. So we couldn't play any more morsels in here, even if we wanted to. Um, that's where cards like Space Prism come in. It's a consume card, so I can only play it once per battle unless I find some way to bring it back, but it adds one capacity. So if I cast that into here, now we've got an extra slot in this room. Uh, because I reset my save data, I'm getting the tutorials again. But uh, yeah, we get an extra capacity slot in this room. So if I had another morsel, I could play it. I happen to have two space prisms in my hand, so if I play another one, now I've got two slots. So now I could pull in another train steward into here. Just as an example. I only did that because he happened to be in the room or in our, my hand, excuse me. So now this train steward is going to eat this Entumbra morsel. Of course, after we get rid of that collector. All right. So we're gonna punch him down. So there was the eaten trigger. And our train steward here gained four health, four max health, basically. So our train steward says 10 out of 12 because it took two damage from the uh, Forge Disciple earlier. But yeah, that is how the morsel mechanics work. It's the front unit in the room. 
the one the close that is the closest to the enemies, so your unit layout really matters. Let's see what morsels we get. Just to talk about different ones. Okay, we got two more different ones we can look at briefly. Uh, we got the Morsel Jeweler. Eater gains plus one life and damage shield one. And damage shield nullifies the next source of damage, so this can be great. Especially if you can stack it up highly. Um, it's really good against bosses. And we got the Morsel Excavator. Eaten, Eater gains plus two attack and life steal one. So, as you can see, there's a number of different morsels that have different effects. Uh, and can do different things, and they have different base stats too, like even this one can attack, it's a 2-1. Um, so yeah, there's like a, there's a lot to think about when you're playing Umbra. Okay, now I'm going to abandon this run because we've already like totally messed it up basically by skipping rewards and so on and so forth. Alright, so I lost, great. <laughs> okay, now I was considering playing some multiplayer. Um, let's see... If anybody is around. I'm looking over at uh, Discord right now. Alright, well, I think I'm going to try the daily challenge. What do we have today? And I'm playing in the uh, the private beta, basically. Um, this is not the, the public version of the game, so... Um, if there are other, but there are other streamers now playing the game live currently, they would not be able to play with me because uh, I'm not playing on the same servers that they are. Um, so some people have already played this today. In fact, some of these people, uh, <laughs> we had a bug in the daily challenge. I guess they're a little bit sad. Where uh, daily challenges are supposed to be played at Covenant level one. There's 25 Covenant levels of like increasing challenge in the game. And Covenant level 1 it adds some interesting things above 0. 0 is kind of like the tutorial Covenant level that you, you play in when you're a new player to the game. Um, however, we accidentally had uh, this daily challenge set to Covenant level 25. That's already been fixed, so we're going to be back to 1. Looks like we're playing the Umbra as our primary clan, so we're going to get to see more of that. Uh, Allied clan is the Awoken. Our mutators are hashtag blessed, gain a random artifact after every battle. That is going to be awesome, super helpful. Hollow, friendly units enter with Heartless. That means they can't be healed, which nullifies a lot of what the Awoken clan does, because healing is one of their kind of core design tenets. Um, and small hands, minus two cards per turn, which makes the game really hard uh, in general. So we're going to want to try to find ways to counteract that. All right, I've got some questions, though. Vladimir Lemon says, does Space Prism tap into the overcrowded buffer that allows units to ascend, descend into another room, or is that separate? Um, so in addition to the capacity rules that I was explaining just a moment ago, there's also a hard limit of seven units in any room, which is really just about usability for the player. Uh, and it, I mean, it obviously has game design implications as well. But uh, when you get too many units into a single room, it's just like, you can't even understand what you're clicking on. There's just too much UI for what we want to communicate and so on. So um, <clears throat> there is that additional uh, restriction on uh, units, which you you know for like a new player that doesn't come up. But as you play the game more and as you get into it and you start experiencing more cards and more strategies, you will encounter that. Um, so yeah, it's something to to be mindful of. But I think for players who are just you know coming into the game, it's something that kind of gets unveiled over time and. You know, as soon as you see it, then you start to understand it. All right. Real, real Achelon. Achelion. Sorry if I'm butchering names, of course. Is this the updated skills of the morsels? Yes, this is uh, a patch as of yesterday. So this is um, all the latest and greatest, uh, which includes possibly some changes that are, I mean, it definitely has changes that are different from um, what the streamer, the other streamers are playing right now uh, as to whether or not like what specific things have changed, I couldn't say, but yes, there are differences. Um, and this is going to be, this version is closer to what the launch version of the game is going to be. So that's worth noting. Um, Corvus Mortis says, might you make cheats unlockable for silly stuff, or at least cheats that do silly mechanics, such as all creatures, enemy and ally have one attack, one HP. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, probably not via the developer cheats. Um, I think what we are considering doing as one potential thing to update after the game comes out, as like a early update, I should say, um, are additional mutators and additional like game changers. We just talked briefly about what the mutators are in the daily challenge we're about to play, but crazy ones like 
everything has one attack and one HP. Could be a mutator. Uh, I don't think we would put those into the daily challenges, like, because we're starting to think of like mutator ideas that are totally unbalanced or just crazy. Um, <clears throat> we might put those like only for custom challenges where you can design your own challenge. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I like the idea of allowing uh, freedom to make up crazy and weird scenarios. And so uh, we're currently thinking of doing that via mutators. And Uranic says, or asks, will there be some more custom challenge modifiers at release or later down the line? So that's what we were just talking about. So yes, I think there's 20, there's 20 something right now. Um, and we are definitely planning to add more. All right, let's get started on the run. Cool. So this run, our final boss is Seraph the Diligent. The end is near. The great <laughs> traitor will devour your spells. You better bring more of them if you hope to succeed. If anyone hasn't seen this before who's watching the stream, uh, this version of Seraph has the Power Drain emblem, and the first spell card of each turn gets consumed. So, gotta keep that in mind. Our starting cards are Making of a Morsel. Add a Morsel Miner to your hand. Tooltip tells you what it does. It's a Morsel uh, where the Eater gains plus five, plus five. That's pretty good. Uh, however, this Morsel has zero one stats, so it's pretty weak. Can't use it as a blocker. We've got Glimmer. This is an AoE damage and heal spell. However, don't forget what our mutators are. We can't heal, so its utility is kind of cut in half. And we got the Ember Forge. Uh, I really like this card. It's a huge, big Chungus unit in the train. Takes four capacity slots. Gives you plus two Ember per turn. And if you're just watching Monster Train for the first time, Ember is your kind of mana resource uh, used for casting cards. It's what's represented here for the cost of either summoning a unit or casting a spell. And it uh, looks like there's some cute little morsels there standing around the fire. In fact, I think they're holding it up. They're like carrying the Ember Forge in your train. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is just a reminder of what our mutators are. So mm. we've got to remember about Hollow. We can't heal. All right. Got some different people playing. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we've got Rasm Frasm is playing already. And in the fourth ring of hell in battle, we've got Hermit playing, Sir Soaring Spud, Gordy266. They're sending emotes. Here, I'll send. That's my favorite one. Uh, we have five in-game emotes you can send to other people when you're playing multiplayer right now. Um, so we've got the champions. These are kind of cartoon versions of the champions of each of the clans. Angry, thinking, crying, trolling, and I don't know, happy. Um, this is my favorite one, though. <laughs> All right. Let us look. Oh, we've got some bad news. Padfoot SM played this earlier. Uh, this is another multiplayer feature. When people play, you can see where they died. Hmm. Although I pretty much guarantee that that was played when there was the bug where it was at Covenant 25. So sorry, Padfoot. Amphi DSF died on Daedalus. Thomulus died uh, in the fourth battle. Dragonus Guardia died in, at Fell. Anyway, so looks like some people uh, got taken out in various places. Um, all right, let's see what our artifact is. What do we want to take? Your pyre gets plus 15 attack. It's okay. It's just like, it's just a straight buff for you. Uh, you know, we don't want units to get into our pyre anyways, so that would be perhaps a reason not to take it. Although with small hands, the game can be very hard in the early game, especially when we don't have any other way to draw cards. So this might be decent, this run. Uh, and Petrified Crucible, Spike Steel, plus one damage per stack. I don't really see us going for a Spike strategy because Spikes, you usually want to use healing too because you want to heal up your units who are taking damage because Spikes is about taking damage on your units to deal damage back. And when you do that, you usually want to heal your units. And we can't heal because of the Mutator. So I'm going to go for Boon of the Blacksmith because of that. And our Dark Forge. Okay, so... We've got two options to pick from for our champion upgrades on Penumbra. We've got the Architect Path. Capacity is the same. Attack is buffed to 20. Summon, when he's summoned, uh, plus two capacity on this floor. This has been changed <laughs> design-wise since I last played. It used to be on Slay. So um, when you bring this unit in, he is going to your champion in. He's going to add extra capacity on the floor. Or the Monstrous Path, where his capacity, base capacity, increases to four. That's why that's blinking in red, to make sure that you notice that. Gets Trample as a new trait. So when attacking, excess damage is applied to the subsequent enemy unit. It's like a overkill type of thing. So if you kill the first enemy or you know, in the kind of room, the remaining damage will go to the next and so on. Um, and the base stats go to 3520. So 
Let me think. Do do do. Hmm. I'm tempted to go monstrous. The fact that we can't heal though is making me wonder if that's the right idea. We do have two making of a morsel, which means we can definitely buff him up, and the summon of extra capacity. Yeah, I don't know. We wouldn't want to play the Ember Forge in the same room because of the morsel eating rooms <coughs> rules. Excuse me, I, I explained earlier. I don't know. Let's try Architect. Let's give it a shot. I haven't used this since it got redesigned, so let's see what happens. Okay, so Guardians of the Light is our battle and our trial. Retribution. Non-boss enemy units enter with Spikes 3. Do we want to deal with Spikes? We can't heal, so Spikes is harder for us because of that. Uh, we can kind of heal from the Morsel Miner by increasing our max health. Now let's try it. I feel like you, know, you always got to take the trials in uh, a competitive challenge uh, because trials do lead to you getting more score, or higher score, I should say. Um, so... On most daily challenges, if you want to win, you've got to take all the trials, basically, <clears throat> in terms of points. Um, all right, we got Glimmer, we've got Penumbra, we've got Train Steward. <sighs> I guess let's just start playing them. Oh, well, yeah, let's just start playing them here. Mm hmm, hmm. I'm going to play him in front. That may have been a bad decision, but I'm just expecting him to die soon. So you can see it said heal blocked. We can't heal here. Let's speed the game up a bit. All right, so these restore cards, we want to purge them. Like, we're really punished because healing doesn't work, and uh, we only draw three cards per turn by default, so that's nasty. Yeah, now I'm already regretting uh, putting that train steward there because I really want to put... Well, I can put it here. So, um, yeah, that's not bad. All right, so the train steward is going to die uh, in combat. So then my morsel jeweler will be eaten by Penumbra in this case, which is what I want. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to do. To, and we can't get that collector. There's no way to do it. Can't heal. Regen is not going to work either. That's going to be blocked. I actually am going to summon the Ember Forge into the same room here uh, to act as a blocker. I think I want to do that. Ah, spikes? Yeah, I think so. All right. Glimmer that. We can actually kill that guy and keep him out of the pyre, which is good. Mm. Not, not wonderful. I guess I'm going to just put this Morsel Miner here. We can't fit him in there. We're dealing 60 damage to the boss. It's not my best work here, boys. <laughs> I wish I had one of those Glimmers in my hand to get rid of this uh, backline attacker. That really would have helped. And even worse... Yeah, I'm definitely glad I took Boon of the Blacksmith. But as I was going to say, even worse, uh, this boss summons uh, these Scourge cards, so Weight of Contrition. Every time he kills somebody, I think... Let's see. No, it's on Resolve at the end of turn. Um, which is extra bad because of the Small Hands Mutator yet again. So, we have almost nothing we can do here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, that's good. That'll get another 10 damage, okay. That does nothing, but just cast it anyways. Alright, we're definitely going to take more Pyre damage here, but... Uh, so be it. So there's no point in even casting those. Whoops. Because you can't... Um, even if I put a morsel into this room, there's nobody to eat it, and they'll die in combat anyway, so we're taking some damage here. <laughs> Sad emoji. Well, I got more points than Gordy 266, so I bet Gordy had a very similar uh, <laughs> uh, level 1 battle that I had, or ring 1 battle, I should say. All right, let's see. What did we get in terms of our free artifact? So this is the, the only good part of today's daily challenge is that we have hashtag blessed. We get a free artifact after every battle. When you summon your first morsel unit each turn, draw one. Okay, great. Yes, definitely want that. Helps counteract small hands. Okay, what cards do we want from our clan pack? 
Um, do Grovel. Okay, these are the options. Apply damage shield one. Add two uncommon or rare morsel units to your hand. That's good. I mean, damage shield helps keep our units alive. Damage shield is extra useful, I feel, because of Heartless, because we can't heal at all. Uh, we've got packed morsels. Just get three uncommon or rare morsels, which is nice. And Immortal Trade. Apply Lifesteal three. Lifesteal does not work uh, with Heartless. Because um, life still heals when you get uh, when you deal damage, but we can't heal, so this is probably a bad card here. So Ember Drain too. So I don't think we definitely don't want that. So the question is between Grovel and Pack Morsels. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go Grovel because we can't heal, and hopefully we can buff that up. All right. Yep. Wildwood Sap from our Ally Clan, the Awoken. Terrible. Regen is a healing effect does nothing. Enhance a unit with plus eight attack and minus two life uh, for Razor Sharp Edge. It's not bad. It's better if you can, um, I guess, like survive for longer periods of time. If we get more damage shield, that's that's not too bad, I don't feel. But it's also, we've got morsels that kind of serve the same function, so it's not great either. Um, and we've got Sting. Five damage to the front enemy unit and draw one next turn. I'm actually, I'm gonna take that because I wanna get more card draw desperately uh, with small hands, so let's see how it goes. Now we get to choose if we wanna go left or right. If we go left, we've got the Merchant of Magic, the Spell Merchant, and we get an Umbra unit. And if we go right, we have the Merchant of Steel to upgrade our units, and uh, we get an Awoken unit. Um, I, because we have the Consume Seraph at the end, and I don't think I have, well, I mean, I would kind of like to reduce the mana cost, or the ember cost, I should say, on Grovel. But I also want to see if I get a decent Awoken unit, so I'm going to go to the right. So we see that Johnny Devo, who's also playing live with us at the same time, went to the left, um, which is always, I think, interesting to see what people are choosing. All right. And we've got two, two options here. We've got the Thorned Hollow, Summon, gain 50 max health. And Rejuvenate, which is a effect that triggers when you get healed, which can't happen in this run. Gain Spikes 1, so this is a terrible card for this run because of the Heartless effect. And Animus of Speed, Quick, Attacks Before Enemy Units, 25-3. Uh, that's good, so we're, I mean, we're definitely going to go with this. What I really would love to get on that uh, unit is Multi-Strike, and oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, speaking of. Um, and then hopefully, while we are in battle, being able to put um, either somebody in front to block or to put a uh, damage shield on the Animus to protect her. So we're definitely going to put Multi-Strike on her. That looks nice. Do we want to upgrade her health with Hearts Hearthstone? That's an option. We could also put Hearthstone on Ember Forge. Try to keep it alive longer and use it as more of a blocker. It could be a blocker for Animus of Speed even as well. We need more base capacity to make that possible. Or Battlestone gives both plus more attack and health, which of course plus attack scales great with uh, multi-strike. But I don't know, like you kind of want to hold out and be greedy and uh, not put the second upgrade because each unit can only have two upgrades on it. Excuse me. Um, if I wait, we might be able to get like another multi-striker or something like that. Uh. <laughs> well, I am actually, I'm going to put Hearthstone on the Animus of Speed. I just feel like the extra life might help us in the mid-game. <clears throat> Do I want to purge anything right now? Probably. I mean, we want to get rid of these god-awful restores. So restores going to do absolutely nothing for us in this run, so let's just get rid of that. Non-boss enemy units get plus four attack, which again, rough for us because we can't heal, but I'm just gonna keep taking every trial. <laughs> Makes the stream more interesting, if nothing else. All right. So we've got Quick. So he's got 40 life, the enemy there. That means he's dead. Uh, the Overcharged Apprentice is gonna die. We're not gonna take any damage because we've got Quick, which is beautiful. 
Do I want to put Penumbra in the same room as the Animus of Speed? Yeah, maybe, especially with, like, the kind of overkill here, and hopefully put some morsels back there. And we'll just go ahead and toss the train steward there. That is why quick is good. All right. Morsel miner. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, well, we're definitely gonna put him there. We gotta draw a card because of Mask of Penumbra. That's nice as well. All right, let's sting him, get our gold. Let's glimmer this room, kill the guy in the back. Uh, okay. And we didn't care about the encant trigger because we have quick again and he died. This is looking wonderful right now. So we're gonna grovel to get damage shield. And we got two more guys to give even more damage shield. Okay, I'm feeling very good about our chances against the boss here. <clears throat> and he's dead, so. We don't even need to think about anything, but let's just throw another morsel in here. Gain one ember next turn. Sure, why not? Now let's cast this one and throw another in there. Mm. Synergy is already feeling good. All right, all right. What artifact do we get from our hashtag blessed? Gain a random artifact after every battle. We got regen, restores, plus one health per stack. Terrible! Let's take 25 gold. We do not need that. Our clan pack. Prism Retrieval. X card. Consume. Draw a unit with it and enhance it with 5x attack and minus x ember. Not bad. Would be awesome if we could get Animus of Speed from that, but it's hard with that small hands, and we're going to want to cast Animus of Speed usually as soon as we see it to start establishing some board presence. Immortal Trade, we already talked about why we're never going to pick this card in this run, because Life Steal doesn't work. And Space Prism, do we need more capacity? I think probably not, actually, because of what uh, Penumbra Summon, the Architect ability, is doing. I mean, it's not bad, but also it does put more stuff in our deck, and it doesn't feel like we need it right now. And I'm not sure if we will. So I am leaning towards not taking that either which might be the wrong decision. Mm, I'll, I'll take it just in case. Somebody else just showed up. What's up, Jinsaku? All right, Wild Wood Sap, terrible. Glimmer, we already have it. Steel Enhancer, plus three, plus three. This is actually decent. Let's take that. All right, and a unit. So we've got Awoken Hollow. Again, he's another Rejuvenate. It's healing oriented. We're not gonna pick him. Shadow Eater. Uh, this guy's got a funny gorge ability. Restore five health. That won't work because of Heartless again. Deal five damage to enemy units, so it's an AOE damage spell. Although without his uh, restore five health component of that card, uh, that unit, it's a lot less good. And the biggest of Chunguses, the Shadow Siege, takes up five capacity. 200, 200. Costs six Ember to cast, which we can get close to with the Ember Forge. <laughs> it's tempting to go for it, just be greedy. Um, however, like, if we defeat Daedalus in terms of the boss upgrades, I'm really gonna wanna take the one that increases card draw to counteract small hands, so um, that's gonna make it like less likely that we will have enough Ember to cast this. Unless we can, uh, we could duplicate Ember Forge, but two Ember Forges in the same train, that like gets really hard to, to stomach because of the amount of capacity that they take up. Uh, all right, it's probably a bad pick, but I'm just gonna pick it and cross my fingers. We can find a way to cast it. Uh, well, there's the hell vent. We could duplicate <laughs> Amber Forge. <laughs> it seems like such a bad idea, especially given small hands. Um, I'm not gonna go that way, especially since we took some damage. Let's let's heal up here. Check out what is in the merchant first. Um, all right, so you can always hide that sidebar if you need to see. Uh, oh, one thing I'll say though is I don't. I'm not currently playing on an ultra wide monitor, but if you have one that's like 21 by nine or wider, um, this whole like player sidebar that we're seeing here is actually like outside of the game space, which is really nice. Uh, so it never kind of covers anything. All right, <clears throat> so we can upgrade a spell to cost minus one. 
plus 10 magic power, uh, or give something holdover, which is always, always juicy. So let's think about that. The reason why I'm not going to buy anything yet is I always like to go to the concealed caverns first to see what we might get, because we might get a spell and we might want to upgrade it. As you pass a train graveyard, you notice several of your fallen allies within the beasts of gnarled steel lie now extinguished pyre shards. Even further inside the rubble, you can make out some of the last protected treasures. Perhaps if you were to relight the pyre shards using some of your own, the trains would reveal their value. Which of the train's pyre shards do you relight? The small shard. Lose three pyre health, get heartstone. Upgrade a unit with plus 15. I should note also that upgrades for units or spells that come out of Concealed Caverns events are not subject to the two upgrade limit. So now I'm kind of like sad that I put the health upgrade on uh, the Animus of Speed earlier because we can put another one on her now using this uh, potential upgrade we were just looking at. Um, but if I had known that this was coming, I might have put the one that uh, dealt, dealt damage instead. Could take. Oh, and by the way, to get this though, we have to lose three of our pyre health, so it's a trade. Uh, take the medium shard, gives you an artifact called Blood for Blood. When your pyre kills a unit, restore five pyre health. Well, we do have Boot of the Blacksmith, which is increasing our pyre damage, which makes that a bit more appealing because it's like it's a bit. Uh, we're less likely to take damage in the pyre because our pyre is dealing more damage. So, although if an uh, enemy gets in there, we still will take damage most of the time. Um, We'll kill the enemies faster, so that might be a decent trade. Uh, <laughs> or the large shard. Lose 10 pyre health and get the petrified heart, where friendly units gain plus 10 health permanently on all units and heartless, which we already have. We already have heartless on all our units because of the hollow mutator, so the downside of this one doesn't exist in this in this run. Uh, so uh, because of that, hello, W plus M1. Uh, because of that, I'm definitely tempted to take the Petrified Heart. Yeah, why not? Plus 10 life to all all of our units. Seems good. Let's do that. All right, the Pyre Shard flickers to life, and the treasure is now revealed. There we go. Let's move on along on our way. Okay, now let's go back, and let's think about what we want to put in terms of upgrades. Holdover, holdover. Holdover means it comes back into your hand every turn. It does take up a space in your card draw, though. So if we're only drawing three cards per turn, and one of those cards is holdover, if I cast it, a spell, if I cast a spell during my turn, on my next turn, when I draw three cards, one of the three is going to be the holdover spell. So you better be damn sure that it's something that you want to like take up, as of right now, one third of our card draw every single turn that you cast it. Um, Sting might be an interesting one to choose for that uh, because it causes us to draw an extra card. It would mean it, we kind of like mitigate the negative aspect of it and we get the plus, we get the five damage. Don't know, interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more just like, if we did that, it would just be free five damage every turn to the front, which is like, it's not that great. Uh, given how enemies start to scale towards the mid and late game. Steel Enhancer is a card I like to put holdover on, because we can just keep buffing and keep buffing and keep buffing. Is there any other spells we'd want to put it on? Grovel is pretty good, too, for us. Damage shield plus random morsels that can give more damage shield. So yeah, can we afford to both lower the cost and put holdover? Yes, we can. So why don't we lower the cost of Grovel to one? and put Holdover on it as well. All right, that's what I'm going with. All right, our Daedalus variant is the double barrel one. Constructed explosives explode twice. There's the bomb, so on its turn, so when I hit end turn, it's gonna blow up twice for 20 damage. Now the folly of my ways is shown. So here's our Shadow Siege that we can't do anything with. Lovely. Uh, if I summon, let's see, there's gonna be 20 damage in this room. So I could, if I didn't, don't care about this train steward, which I don't really, I could just summon him in front of Penumbra into this room and just let him die. Cause he would soak up all the, the damage there. That would be gambling on the next turn though I get what I want, which I might not. 
So, out of safety, I'm going to put him up there. I don't know what I want to do with this train steward. I don't want to put him in front of Penumbra because I want Penumbra to eat morsels later. I don't know. I'm just not going to cast him. So, that's a rough turn, not being able to do much. Of course, there's that stupid bomb. Okay, if I play the Animus of Speed in here, then she will kill the bomb before it can attack, which seems smart, so I'm going to do that. And we're going to get some damage on Daedalus, which is great. It's going to take 45 there. Uh, I could wipe out this entire wave with Glimmer, but this one's more threatening because these guys have higher damage, so I'm actually going to do it there. Alright, he put his bomb down there. That's great. I don't care. Okay, let's do a Morsel Miner. Well, this is interesting. So, yeah, okay, this was a great pick, the Petrified Heart. So the Morsels also get plus 10 life across the board. So here we can put this Morsel in front of Penumbra to eliminate uh, the damage that we were going to get. Um, because all of these clergymen who get the chance to attack are going to hit the Morsel Miner, and we don't care because he's going to get eaten anyways at the end of turn. So there is no downside to that. All right. Per Platypus says, Dev stream, super cool. Thank you. Uh, is this a one-person project? Definitely no. Uh, there's a lot of people that worked on this game. Um, on the kind of core dev team right now, there's 10-ish. A little bit more than 10, I think. Um, but there was also like 20 or 30 artists worked on the game to help do all the card art and so on and so forth. So very far from a, a one-person project. I wish I could say... I was talented enough to do all the design, all the programming, all the art, all the fantastic audio, uh, all the servers and everything that are, are in this game, but definitely not. Um, all right. So we got three train stewards and an Ember Forge. Whee! Not really what we want to have here. I mean, I want to get the Ember Forge benefit, so I guess I'll just play it there. It'll live for at least one turn. Is there any reason to play these train stewards? I guess. Maybe just get them out of my deck so I don't draw them again, just in case. <clears throat> Sorry, Ember Forge. Uh-oh. That does not look good. That is a really, really nasty room. Alright, well, we're definitely going to grovel our champion. That's going to help mitigate some of this. Okay, and now we've got some other things. So, two damage, four damage, seven, uh, ten, thirteen, fourteen, and then twenty more. So, this guy can absorb all of the damage from the enemies, and then we'll die. Okay, well, already now Penumbra's not taking damage, so that is fantastic. <laughs> Want to make sure that he eats that. What else can we do? Yeah. Let's get that guy. Uh, I'm going to Steel Enhancer, I think, my Animus of Speed because the value is higher. Gain one Ember next turn. Okay, we're going to have six Ember next turn because that Morsel is going to give us an Ember and we've got our Ember Forge is alive and going to live here. So let's see if we get our biggest Chungus and can cast him. I don't think we can cast him, though. We don't have enough space in any room. Yeah. You see how many enemies we just killed uh, in our Pyre room? I'm kind of sad we didn't take that other artifact, too, that um, would have healed our Pyre for, like, 20 right there. All right, we did not get who we were looking for. That's the downside, again, of Holdover, is, like, we've got only three cards here. It just took up uh, one of the slots, but... It is still a very valuable card to be casting here um, with our champion, so let's do that. In fact, let's Space Prism in here. We can get another Morsel in here, so let's cast the Shade Splitter. Let's see. What do I want to do? Hey, we got some attack on our uh, Ember Forge. I always like seeing the Ember Forge attack. Ah, oh, there's the Shadow Siege we were hoping for last time. 
But again, we wouldn't have been able to cast it. Not enough capacity in either room. That probably was a really a terrible pick for this run, but what can you do? What can you do? Alright, well. Sorry, little train steward. You're just going to be left to die. We're focused on buffing up this room up here. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got a lot of damage shield going. Yeah, it's not looking good for Daedalus now. In fact, we can block one more round of combat by putting a morsel in front because Daedalus does 9 damage. Due to our Petrified Heart, we've got 15 life on this morsel. He's going to soak up the first attack with no downside. And we're going to eat them all up. So... <clears throat> Having Holdover on Grovel did actually do pretty well for us because we were able to stack up a bunch of um, damage shield stacks onto our champion, which then prevented us from taking any damage, which is great. All right. Pyre Wall is our artifact from Hashtag Blessed. Your Pyre starts with 15 armor. Sounds good. All right. Rare card pack. We've got Blazing Bolts. Deal 30 damage to the front enemy unit. Add a stronger version of this card to your discard. So it just keeps getting better as you cast it. Jay to Jordy, hello, what's up? We got Channel Song, draw a unit and enhance it with plus 20, plus 20, and zero. This is fantastic for casting Big Chungus. Makes his Ember go to zero. So that's super tempting. And Adaptive Mutation, restore a friendly unit to full health, which will be blocked by both the Hollow Mutator and Petrified Heart. Got a double block. Maybe there's a bug. Maybe those two things will cancel each other out. We could, we could pray on that. Um, and it swaps their attack and health. I don't think we want that. So let's go Channel Song. Let's try it. Unit Draft. We could go for another Shadow Siege. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It's probably a bad idea, but it would make it more likely... <laughs> it's already been a bad idea. It would make it more likely that Channel Song would hit one of our two Shadow Sieges, if we had two. Um, another option is... I don't want another Animus of Speed, I don't think. So the other option is Morsel Master. When you summon a Morsel, a unit unit on this floor create a copy, uh, which is a good accelerator for Penumbra um, to keep eating if we decide to do that, or, you know, we gotta have somebody else eat. Animus of Speed eating Morsels is really high value, too. Hmm. I'm just gonna go all in on the dumb strategy. So let's do another Shadow Siege. Maybe we'll try to duplicate channel song later okay so for our major enhancements i mean i want to take card draw like for sure uh to try to mitigate against small hands plus capacity is always tempting when you're playing umbra because you want to keep adding morsels and more ember is really only tempting in the context of trying to cast the shadow siege but i let's go now that we got channel song let's forget about that and just try to get free free casts um, via uh, via channel song. So I think I'm just going to go back to going for uh, card draw, I think is our best bet. Oh, oh! I almost got juked. <laughs> and this only happened because I played the game for a long time. I almost clicked the Light of Seraph, which used to be the card draw enhancement, but we changed it. Okay, where's this compound it is? Phew! All right. Okay, if we go left, we get a purge, free two-card purge, which I really want to do because I want to get rid of these restores that are so junky in our deck. We get a unit merchant, an awoken unit, and on both sides we get the dark forge. Um, if I go to the right, I get an artifact, healing, and gold. We don't have that much gold, but I really want to purge, so I'm going with Jin Saku, I'm going to the left. Um, and I'm just, I don't even need to think, I don't think. I'm just going to get rid of these restores. They do just absolutely nothing. Okay. Next. Uh, let's look at the Dark Forge first. Alright, we can go Architect 2. Buff buffs are base stats to 40, 30, and plus 3 capacity on that floor. Which is good. More capacity, good. And Monstrous again, which increases our base capacity, but gives us Trample. I don't know, I'm, I'm, let's go Architect 2. I want more capacity. We can do some stuff with it. Alright, and the Awoken banner. We've got the Animus of Will. Multi-Strike 2. And we've got Husk Hermit with Sweep. 
We don't have anything with sweep right now, and sweep is good for hitting backline units. So I think I would lean towards that. However, if we draft more units, it makes it more likely that our channel song cast won't hit our big chunguses. So, I mean, we really want to start purging these train stewards out as well. Uh, I think I'll take the Husk Hermit. Like, the utility of Sweep is pretty darn good. So, we've got 100 gold. We could purge a card. We could give somebody Endless. Is there anyone in our deck we want to give Endless to? I don't think so. Not on this run. Uh, plus 4 attack and plus 6 life or plus 6 attack. Nope, I don't think so. I'm actually going to use my gold to purge. And I am going to get rid of a train steward now because I want to make it less likely that our channel song hits a train steward. Of course, if it does, I'm going to be sad. All right, let's see what, what do we got here. Protectors of the Clipped, Mark of Invasion with the Sycophant unit. Which buffs other units when it comes in and when they die, excuse me. But let's just keep taking them all. I think I'm just gonna let these. I'm just gonna take the pyre damage. We've got the or we've got the 15 from pyre wall, so we're not gonna take any damage even. So let's do that. It's got an encant trigger on the clip reflector, so I do not want to cast this spell in the same room with him. So I'll cast it here. Uh, the enemies are showing 10 damage, so it's four and six. So I can put him in front because of our petrified heart to get plus 10 life, which is fantastic. And then, do I want to steal Enhance? Or do I want to do another Morsel? I think I'm just gonna do another, oh, that was dumb. I just did what I said I shouldn't do. Uh, I did another Morsel, we're gonna gain some Ember. All right. Thank you, Pyrowall, for protecting us from that damage. Alright, here's our channel song. Six available targets for it. But well, we gotta try it, but don't cast it in this room, right? Alright. Let's cast it up here. Just put... No! It's the, <laughs> the worst unit we wanted to have it hit. <sighs> Sad. Alright, let's go... Let's put him there as a blocker. Oh, um, now maybe I should have put the Huskerman. We could have killed that guy. Oh, well. Um, do that. Anything else I want to do here? Okay. Yeah, that was a misplay. I should have put the Huskerman up there so that we could have killed the uh, Collector. question. Why was it changed which artifact is which from Gezian? Um, it was a lore reason. It was about, and color reason. Excuse me, it was actually even more about color. Uh, the reason was the capacity little pips here, of course he's talking while I'm trying to show this. Um, floor capacity is yellow, so we wanted the uh, major enhancement artifact to be yellow to match that. Uh, it just confuses people on the dev team because it was the it was the other way for so long. Uh, it just becomes habitual for like where you click and so on. But um, all new players, I'm sure, won't have a problem as they get used to it. All right. Do I want to play an Ember Forge? Yeah, I guess I might as well. We're not going to be able to play a Shadow Siege this battle. So, all right. Yeah, even though he's going to encant, I want to grovel my uh, champion there to start getting, uh, get some protection, get powered up here some more. Uh, 
Put another trade and stir it in there. I think uh, this is going to be the last battle of my stream. I would love to just be here and stream all day long, but uh, I do have other stuff I need to do with regards to getting this game ready to release. Um, so let's see how, how well we can wrap up this battle. Though. It's it's feeling pretty good, actually. I mean, like, that's the nice thing with Channel Song, is that even though it hit a train steward, which made me sad, uh, it, still, it still buffed him up a pretty darn good amount. All right, so what are we gonna do here? We're definitely gonna grovel again, grovel again. Grovel as many times as we can. All right. All right, yeah, we were able to get enough damage by all those buffs and all these morsels to kind of take out the wave of enemies here. I'm going to hold down right click. You can always speed up the animations with that. Um, there's four speeds. So, you know, because I already kind of know what the outcome is going to be, um, you can speed up gameplay if you so wish to kind of see uh, what happens there. And so I'm going to cut it off there, though. Thank you for joining me. I'll try to finish this run later so we can see how well I do on the leaderboard. Um, I've been suggested that we tell everyone who's watching right now to go and raid... Cringer, who is also streaming the game currently. If you want to see somebody else playing Monster Train, um, who is not, hasn't played as much as I have and is exploring the game for the first time, please go and check out Cringer's stream on Twitch. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for joining me today. Remember, Monster Train comes out on May 21st, just six days from now. If you like what you saw, please wishlist us on Steam. You can find out more at themonstertrain.com and join us on Discord at discord.gg forward slash monstertrain. Thanks and see you next time. Bye.